And tonight we have a special presentation by the Caneo Valley Botanic Garden, yeah. one of our favorite spots. So if you care to join us at the podium, we're going to give you the, the floor and you can give us your spiel and, and all the accolades that uh, you deserve. So please introduce yourself and for the record and we'll look forward to your presentation. Well, thank you. I didn't know you were gonna be so quick with me here. Yeah. Hello, Nellie. Uh, I am the, with the, uh, the Botanic Garden and I've been there for 20 years now as a volunteer. And so I know quite a bit about it, but uh, I don't know if I can spill it out to you in a good way or not, but I'm sure gonna try. I'm real happy to be here to see you again. I know some of you have long terms just like I have in the Botanic Garden. And I still marvel what we can do with our volunteers in that Botanic Garden. Uh, I don't know if you've walked there lately, but I was there the other day and I just really was truly impressed. It seemed like there weren't a, wasn't a thing out of place and all the flowers were in bloom and all the, the, go, the bushes are big and it was uh, real encouraging always to go and see it so nice. My, oh, I have to tell. I haven't done it this way before. Well, number one. <laughs> there. That's the introduction. That's one of my favorite places in the garden. As you probably know, I hope you've all been there. Uh, we have lots and lots of big trees and a lot of places to walk and you can get good exercise and uh, it's, it's a pretty nice place to be too. We'll start at the top of the hill. Can you see over there? Oh, you've got another one. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, we have a, another, a, a more recent man who took a real interest in the top of the hill. And he has done a lot of work to make it better than it was. And the girls in the middle are visitors. And the one in the left, on the left in the front, is the safest because that stub of that tree that was used to make that setting uh, is the, the roots are still in the ground. Number two. These are more pictures of the cactus. Uh, it blooms, they bloom off and on, different ones at different times. But one of my favorites is that arch that you can walk under. I always think that's kind of fun. And they put out, the blossoms are, are a lot of different kinds, but uh, anyway, I showed you one tonight. Next. On the left is a, a big weed area that was on the one side of our garden. And you can see the fence below. That was a chain link fence that went for 500, 500 miles. Yeah, no, no, not five, 500 feet, I guess it was. And <laughs> not miles, that I know. And the group, the group helping there is from the uh, Ventura, the Ventura Way Day of Caring, and they come once a month and, and offer to help us out with some project. So we had them pull weeds 25 feet from that fence up the hill. And the one on the right shows the replacement fence, which is at the, the beginning of the garden, the, the entrance, not the newest entrance, but the other one. And it made a much better look because that fence before that was chain lake and it came down to all those trees to the first one in the front. And now you feel like there's a lot of open space when you walk in there. And I think that was a big uh, plus for the garden. We didn't do it all in black iron. We did part of it back in, in, the, uh, in the chain link, but that's okay. It was far away. This was a place where it was more important. We went, when we got to the part over by the nursery, we enlarged the space. So it gave us a, another big space where we can do more for the garden, okay? In this big space, we had a, me that, a tree that we wanted to remove. It was probably the first time that a large forklift was used in the garden. I didn't take the picture of the forklift, but, but it was big. And then they, the, the men had to dig this hole. I think it took them three days all around the, tri the tree and then they somehow lifted it with the fourth forklift, I guess, up into that box. 
and turned it over and drove it away. So that gave us all plain, plain space to use. And this is the space that we gained. Before, it, where those uh, plants, green plants are on the left and all the way down to the right side of the page, that was all behind the gate in a place that was full of oh, nothing really, just some uh, scrub plants and weeds and so forth. The fence before came just by that table on the left, so everything there was cut off. So we've developed uh, quite a bit of that already, but it still is not finished. And I hope you like red flowers because I took, I kind of picked a bunch of red ones out. I thought you'd really see that nice. And they aren't all named on the page there, but the one in the top right, that's kind of thin pieces, that is a uh, beautiful Australian tree, a brachychiton acerfolius, and it's known, known as a flame tree. Flame, the hot, hot flame, red. And we also have trees in bloom and there they are. And the sign up on the top right will give you an idea of how we label our plants. The label you see is the name of the plant and the one that's cut off at the top is where we would put your name or the person you were dedicating the tree to. Now this, this is a new project. Actually, it's an old project. It was our salvia garden. And salvias, if you know, has a, take a lot of sun. Well, the place was surrounded with big trees and gradually the leaves came out and shaded the place and no longer would the salvia grow there. So we're going to move the, the salvia up at the top, there's some salvia, and then we're gonna expand it a little bit further with that wonderful grant and put irrigation up there and kind of re, replace our salvia garden. But the, uh, the, the green that they're putting down, I think it's give it, gonna look really nice. The photo on the left, I guess you can tell it's an old mobile home maybe. And one of our members, uh, Mary Ann Lucas, saw that and she knew about that bare spot across the road and she decided that she was going to build a children's garden. And that trailer was going to be brought over and used as, a, as our building. And that all happened. She got the trailer moved over. She got it free. Somebody gave it to her because it was kind of a wreck. This was in 1999, just before I started coming. I was there before this was finished, but not at this particular time. But I, I was already interested in the garden and I'd heard about this. And so one day I drove out and I looked and looked and I finally found that spot where that trailer was. And I thought, what is wrong with Marianne? How can she think this would ever develop into anything? I mean, it really didn't look very good. I think it, I think it used to hold your, your sand and gravel. Is that right, that space? I never heard any complaints that it wasn't there for you anymore. But anyway, we did get our kids garden. And she, she probably did what nobody else could do. She had it, she made the design. She bought all the things that went in there, including the, the plants and the, the, the gift house and the, the tree house and, you know, oh, I could go on and on. So it was really a, a wonderful thing for the garden and for the community. Now, soon we're going to give this or make this honor for Mary Ann and put it in the kids garden uh, in a bronze plaque. And I'd like to read it because this is really what she was capable of doing and what she did. Mary Ann envisioned and created this with a donated mobile home, endless creativity, clever choices and extreme generosity. Her dream was to create a place for children to play and learn about nature. And the grand opening was held in 2003. It was very sad to lose Mary Ann a few years ago, but her memory stays with us. Now, this is what happens in the kids garden course. This has been closed for a year now, and we're hoping to open it up again, hopefully in a month or so. 
but what the thing on the, the on the left is made it's a it's the uh what did we call that the dragon no the uh the pirate's cage and it was made out of an old tree so that was a big tree and the same people who made that made the tree house and the kids are so cute i want I, I took three pictures of this little boy and i didn't stand too close to him he just stood there looking at me like that and he held his teddy bear in one hand and his bottle in the other and i just thought that was the cutest thing i'd ever seen and the next one over uh, shows how pretty it got with all the plants and the rest you can see oh and the people down in the corner uh, they came up from the creek one day when i was at the garden on a sunday but when we were having the kids garden open about maybe three two years ago and they were carrying these instruments coming up the steps through the garden and I said, what are you doing? I was as a president and I, was, I wasn't president then, but I was, was, should have known who was in our garden playing all this music. And I said, well, why don't you just come and play for us? So they did that day. And they've been there, as I said earlier, for maybe two or three years. And I contacted them again and they said, yes, we're going to come again. So that's a real plus for the, for the people that go there. And this is how we work. That's how we look when we're working. Uh, not me <laughs> anymore, never, I guess. But uh, they seem to enjoy their work. They have as many as 15 people on a Saturday that come and spend the three hours. And uh, up on the top left, you can see the, the big bridge that's uh, over the creek down below the kids' garden. And that's where they, they're not planting a lot of plants there, but they, you know, they get into it and they want to make it look nice. And so they we plant a few there and a lot of them grow and that's good and so that makes it nice for everybody and the second one on the top they're taking some big overgrown plants out of the water features that we have in the garden and the water features let's see i don't see i'll talk more about them later maybe oh and then that one day on saturday we decided to clean up the trailer so then two of the girls came in and vacuumed the whole thing. And so they do everything to, to make it easy for everybody else. Okay. Now this, we have a new website. I wanna tell you, it wasn't easy. It had been ongoing for about, well, more than six months, I think. And this go, Zoe who did, who did it is a student and she did a wonderful job and had a lot of patience well, our main problem was we couldn't we couldn't uh, deal with the lady in Florida who owned the the land. I, I mean the name, and she wouldn't answer. Anyway, I won't go on with that. But that was what the base was one of our problems made it difficult. So she probably has thousands of pictures on that site. It's a canalegarden.org, and you can go through with the arrow and go through one one group of garden and then another one or whatever you want to do. But it's really fantastic of the amount of pictures that she's had in there. And I think her dad helped her a lot with that. And we're grateful for her. Uh, let's see, she is, I want to tell you, she is a student in chemical engineering with a minor in political science, political economy at UC Berkeley in the class of 22. So she's a happy girl, a, ha a very uh, busy girl. And she was good enough to do all this for us. And the little birds down in the corner are one that her father put in for us. And there must be maybe 25 of those little birds in that aviary now. So that's a big plus for the kids that come too. Now, teach, teaching the young is one of our objectives. We do some of it, not a whole lot, but this Jennifer Boyd from the Westlake High School takes this group and they study the water, the air and the water and what else, I don't know, but uh, they seem, this is a real popular thing. And then in the next, next, sun, next uh, play page, we have another group that are from a school and they're measuring the tree trunks. And again, I can't explain this, but it's a nice thing for them to do. And we have beautiful plants this is next to the kids garden part of it and of course 
we stored it. Now that's what it looks like today because we had to take all those plants out and put them down in the nursery where people were there and could take care of them and water them. So hopefully they'll all be filled up again in a, I, I hope in a month. Now it's not all work and no play. So we do have parties once a year. We have a volunteer party. We choose a volunteer of the year and everybody comes and you get the bottom shows the whole group of us uh, and overhead. I want to say now that's the part that's going to get painted uh, on this uh, grant that you're offering us. We've already got a bid on that. So that's a nice place to, to, to meet and uh, that's where we meet for our parties, except now we don't meet there anymore because we can on the, because of the pandemic. So this time Dave was, a, the, he's the volunteer of the year and you can see up in the top part of that right side, all the wonderful things he's, he can paint and he can, he can uh, cut and he can choose and he can think of good ideas. He's just a real, real friend to have in the garden because of all the things he can do. And he also last year led a group of Esperanza services, special needs person to help them volunteer in the garden, which is you take a lot of patience and it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And he wanted to do that. So he really deserved the volunteer of the party, the, the volunteer of the year. And then we all saw, celebrated at your wonderful party at the North Ranch. That was, I think, in uh, two years ago or a year and a half ago. So that's four members of our board. We have eight on the board now, and that's four of them. Now, with, with the grant, I've mentioned that a several times, so you know how happy I am about it. But I wanted to show you the proposal things that we're doing. We're, go we're going to try a, a handrails in about three places. That's the top left. The next one over is going to be painted in the wooden top, so I've already told you that. And then the over one where the, where the men are, the guys, and I guess it's men, women too, are working. That's where the new water feature will go. That's in the kids' garden. And then on the bottom left is the new entrance that we made about three years ago. And you don't see it from here, but beyond the gate there, we're going to put a, a, a bricks on the floor. And, and so it'll be, instead of soil, it will be a solid floor. And let's see what, oh, and then the, the, the honor for Mary Ann will go in the kids' garden in a bronze plaque. And you can look at that crooked little path down there on the right. Uh, that will be some new steps that we'll put in. And then we'll make uh, another interpretive sign, which we have uh, six of them already, I think. And we're going to make another one probably maybe in the top of the hill. I'm not sure yet. And the next, the next feature is what we're looking for in other places in the garden. And these will... These places will all get some new irrigation. That's a big part of it. You, I told you about this, the salvia garden, too much shade, so we're moving it up top a little bit. South African is next, that's going up the hill. And then the trail of trees, some, the trees are gonna get some new bibs or fizzles or something. And then the top of the hill wants a little bit more for their, for their work. There's a lot of bare land up there. And then, of course, the, the middle on the bottom is the Chilean, which is further along than what we see there, but we'll, we'll be doing more there. That all need, the, the area you see there all needs irrigation, a uh, little bit be below the green plants. And then the front, the last uh, picture on the right, low, will have another uh, lit, uh, water path going all along the left side so that we can make better looking plants there. You know, we say no water, but you cannot plant a garden with no water. It has to have some. So that's the end of my uh, lecture. <laughs> and I hope you come to the garden and enjoy it as much as we do who work there. Thank you for having me. Questions or comments? I could come up with a lot and 
Some of you have heard this before. I have a special affinity to the Botanic Garden because a friend of mine from year, from the 60s, when I first met him, Ray Garcia, was one of the individuals who envisioned the Botanic Garden here in the Caneo and helped get, get this uh, off the ground. And which reminds me, is there some kind of a uh, place where they have plaques of individuals who have contributed uh, in some no, way or not, another? Not plaques, but uh, we have for a long time in our three-piece uh, bulletin board, we put names of people who donated. We had started with a lower amount and went up to 50,000. And I stopped that I stopped that a couple years ago, but it was only names in the category where they had donated. And that you're talking about personal stuff, so it, you're not talking about the donations. But no, we don't have that. Okay. What, but we, what, we, we, what, we, what we do have is places where you can donate in the Trail of Trees a tree with a name on it. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. In fact, myself and most likely uh, Director Holt was also at the dedication and planning of the one of the first trail of trees um, you were there yeah well I, I, everybody wasn't there so i want to tell you that we had a wonderful time we we set up a bunch of chairs on the road so they could look down at the at the program the man that we what we did we won a a, a, a grant from the national garden clubs and it was matched by another garden club and uh, he came from San Diego from principal finance to be in this uh, opening. We had a bagpiper and the scouts gave directions and you were there and uh, that was a wonderful memory that we have. We donated trees to servicemen at that time because the theme was right. uh, help our servers or whatever. So, well, I'm glad you were there. And we invited the man you spoke about, tell me his name again. That one of the three men that that founded the garden. Okay, so he might have Ray Garcia. Garcia, Ray Garcia. Yeah. And he came to one of our parties that I pictured in the show, so he was real happy to do that. And so we did announce announce him and praise him. So yeah, he's now deceased. But uh, do you still have dedicating of benches or things? Yes, like we do. Okay. Not too many because we have twenty eight now. Okay. And everybody, well, most people want to go right to the top of the hill because you know we have almost a three hundred and sixty degree view. view. Yeah. So um, so 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 the last guy we said no, and he went up and he found a place, and we got we put one more. That was number eight at the top of the hill. They've been real pot. Yes, we have that. And we have bricks, bricks, uh, and that one kiosk, and uh, and the benches and the trees. Three things. Thank you. You mentioned the creek. Is that still flowing even after all the months of drought? Well, you know, I, I, I think it always runs a little bit. One day I was up there and I thought, oh, it's dry. It's, there's not, nothing is happening. And I stood there about a 30 seconds and I saw a trickle. So I knew it was moving. Is most of that these days some runoff? Yeah. yeah, I know there's some uh, spring too, at least I remember seeing it on the north side of the bank. Well, when I inquired one time, I learned that it was named, it, the name has a creek in it, a royal something creek. Mm -hmm. But I don't know where the creek is because it's certainly, you know, the only t time we see much rain is when it really rains heavy. And one time it rained so heavy it wiped out our 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 bridge over the bench, mm -hmm. not the big one, but the one near the kid's garden. So it can get full, but not very often. Okay. You, you're mentioning volunteers. At one time there used to be groups, and I know because of COVID things it totally changed, but like Amgen and a couple other companies, do they still have volunteers or used to have volunteers to come and help? Amgen uh, made our uh, tranquility garden they were the one that, that planned that and built that but no not not now we don't have that we right. have we have groups who come and want to help on a Saturday for a cup for you know for a couple of hours but uh, that's we don't have anything regular like that okay only two more comments or questions um, you mentioned the parties and 
I remember the board had been invited to the one particular one and the president at the time of the Penny Garden, I think she was the head of the West city of Westlake Village Garden Club or something. It goes back a number of years. Well, she was, and I was, and so was Marianne. We all come, came from the Garden Club years ago. Okay. <laughs> well, that's great. And next time there is an event, you know, the board can have an invitation. And the very last question is for Mr. Hare. Um, the large tree that was removed, were we able to sell that to a nursery or to the landscaper and get some... This in the, 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 tree, the large pictures. tree that was removed from yeah, the, the one she had the pictures of, right? That, the, the one you're referring to there? Yes. Yeah. Well, that, that's no, tree. I didn't have pictures tonight of that, did I? Yeah. You talked about the one tree, you said, you said it took them three days to... Yeah, and you saw a trailer taking it out. Uh, uh, a so month ago or so. Is, what, you said the forklift. I mean, oh, like no, 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 that, no, that forklift was a big green tree. It was a big green tree. Okay, but my question is, it sounds like it was taken out of the garden, removed. Yeah, yeah I'm just referring, I'm referring to her because it's their tree. It's not our tree. So it, no, no, it, it's it, your we, tree. Oh, is our, 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 <laughs> oh, I know that, but, but we, we don't okay, benefit. Well, yeah, I know what you're saying, but. Okay, I wasn't getting that specific, but yeah. just no. curious if there was an opportunity for the Botanic Garden uh, group or CRPD to get some type of uh, price for that. Someone had to pay for getting it removed and so forth. But anyway, I was just curious well, if there if was I, an opportunity to make some money. If I can say a few things about that tree, it, it downed a long time ago. It was a, one of the biggest oak trees that we have. It was huge right over the creek. I guess it fell in the creek. Right across from where the toilet is is where it, where it fell. So the people walking by could all see it. I was there last Friday, about five days ago. It was on the weekend, that's what it was. And there was a big truck and many people and a man all dressed in white with a white fit, every face, every, everything was covered with white. And he was a bug, he was the, the bee guy, the bee guy. And they found that tree was full of bees. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. I understood that was why they removed it because it sat there for months without being touched. And so so I don't know what the bee guy did, but he was there to help whatever he needed to do. Right. Good presentation and thank you very much for taking the time and answering my questions. Thank you. And nice to be here. Director Cusworth. Well I, I really love the Botanic Garden. Um, I went there like I guess 40 years ago when we first moved and I think all it was was a sign. And um, so it's been the hard work of the volunteers and people like Beverly that have really made it what it is today. It's an absolutely stunning place. One of my favorite places. And um, Beverly and I had a very good opportunity that Beverly took me around. And I saw areas of the Botanic Garden I didn't even know were there. And I was really quite astounded because I thought I had spent a lot of time. That's sort of a place you take people. And uh, you can go there for years and years and still find interesting spots. Mm -hmm. And she didn't show, they have these really cool signs now pointing out where things are, you know, like the match sign, you know, like that, it's saying how to get the, how to get where it's, how to get to different gardens so you know what they are. The labeling's wonderful. And um, Beverly made a wonderful book where, two books, uh, where you can look in the book and it will tell you where to find every tree and plant in the garden. So if you really want to go and learn about plants, it's an, Excellent reference. I can't even imagine how much time it took her to make that, but I am a little distressed, I have to say, because I found a place that I wanted a bench. And I told one of my daughters, okay, when I die, I want a bench here dedicated to it. <laughs> Was it so, at the top of the hill? It's not on the top of the hill, but it's in a really, it's in a great spot. And so I thought, well, Maybe I'm going to have to dedicate that bench to myself before I die. I don't know. I don't want, I don't want somebody else to take it. Well, my feeling is we don't have too many benches, so I have to argue with that a little bit. And in the in the native, the California native section where the native plants are, 
there aren't very many in there, and I think they could use a few. So we, we I think we can figure it out. You can but, figure out my bench. Well, I have a very specific spot that I want my bench. Well, you have to show it to me, and then I'll start anyway, working have, on it. I have that in mind. And um, okay. how come you stopped uh, putting people's names on the plaque? I'm just wondering. I know the little the little area you have where you've got a plaque, and then you have the people's names. Yes. The yes. Brass tags. What, well, I I don't know why I did. Um, I wasn't sure people were really looking at it much, and uh, whether they cared. Or, oh, okay. So I, I don't, I don't we know. Just came up with other ideas. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's a lovely place, and I'm just so grateful that we have you. And I'm, I'm hoping to retire next year. I keep telling everybody that, and then I think Sturz is going to tell me that no, it's not my time. But I'm definitely planning to be spending okay, a lot of time. Okay. Well, we'll be glad to see that, you when that happens. So okay. thank you, thank you so much for all you. Thank you. Director Holt, any comments or questions? Uh, no, I just want want to thank you for a very, very good uh, uh, presentation. And of course, it's one of my favorite places in Sayo Snow. So, well, that's nice to know. Uh, so thank you again for You're coming welcome. tonight. You're welcome. Dr. Hopper? I want to add my thanks for, for your presentation. I haven't been to the Botanic Garden in, in, in several years, so I need to get back over there. Um, I'd suggest to Director Cussworth maybe we have a pre-memorial bench rather than memorial bench. So, um, so it, it, it could be done. Um, this is just such a great example of what a group of dedicated volunteers can do in our community. The, the hundreds, I'm sure, hundreds of hours that your volunteers have put in and, and the beautiful result that they've come up with is, is a real um, addition to to our community. So thank you and thank all the volunteers who've been involved with this. I will. Thank you. Uh, th again, I'll just add my thanks as well. Uh, I think our last time there was with the grandkids for the little Santa hike. Uh, they had an absolute blast there and uh, we did too. Thoroughly enjoyed that. But what struck me is, you know, with your partnership and the many years we've had and just to see how it's literally flourished over the, the decades. But what amazes me most is how far you can stretch a dollar uh, with these grant funds. I mean, just the, the things that you talk about. Uh, that's why, you know, when we get the opportunity as a board to, you know, issue grants, I know we get a lot of direction from staff. But to see how this money is spent, I mean, we always know it's going to be well spent. But thank you for giving those examples of what you have done, what you will be doing. It's just dollars well spent, I know, with the volunteer effort and the, the love and compassion that goes along with it. It certainly shows in all you do, and, and the community is the one that benefits. So thank you again for being here tonight and for your ongoing thank efforts. You. Well, that grant, as I've said six times already, that's really wonderful, and we're making the best of it. We studied and studied. We've got we've got bids on almost everything, and we're really, really going for it. So come and see it. I, I understand we have to do it in one year, so you don't even have to wait too long. Yeah. <laughs> thank Very you. good. Well, again, thanks for coming to see you. Appreciate your time. Sure. I enjoy it.